What's good, team? Time today for one of those episodes where I don't talk about Transformers for friggin' once. Welcome to Teenage Mutant Ninja Toy Grind! Yes, indubitably. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, or Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles if you're from a country that thinks you're a Mel, has got to be one of the more beloved 1980s toy-centric franchises that it's still kind of okay to think is cool as a grown-ass adult. Backflipping and shell-kicking through 30-whatever years of weirdos and pizzas, and straight into the uber-stylized animation trend that I choose to describe as spider version 2023's Mutant Mayhem was an excellent ugly on purpose excursion, gleefully glazed in grime and goop, grooving to its own sick beat and placing the emphasis firmly on the first T by allowing the Turks to be a deeply unserious teenage squad of lovably annoying goofheads figuring out life by pranking and roasting each other, you know, like actual teens. So let's dive into this bald turtle iteration, iteration with a U, in the raucous form of the awesome foursome from the Mutant Mayhem mainline, or mainline with a Y. It's Leo, Donny, Mikey and Raph from Playmates, from character. Now I don't claim to be a scholar of turtle history, history with a U, alright. But I'm more than aware they're no strangers to a vibe refresh. Like pretty much the first thing they did was get rebooted from Eastman and Laird's original identical absurdist murder mutants to the much more marketable interchangeable ambulatory tortoise template that the dudes all shared and barely even qualified as palette swaps. I mean look at this guy, what's he like? What's he into? Is he a party dude? Cool but rude? Does he lead? Does he does machines? You haven't got a clue have you? Tell you what he doesn't do, uh, respect the colorblind. But the boys have certainly grown into their shells over the years with an incremental differentiation which is alarmingly evident in this current clutch, with each ninja animal looking dynamically distinctive, boasting unique details, gear, skin tone, physicality, and they look so fresh and vibrant, you know? This look is very now, and inevitably a bit 80s. The broad strokes are the same as they ever was, and why wouldn't they be? There is simply no resisting the righteous riz of the classic chunky shell bod, with the segmented yellow pseudo pecs and the three-fingered two-toed swag. These are quite simply lovely little action figures, packed with personality and super satisfying to hold. They just strike a certain killer combo of chonk and smoothness and fiddleability. Articulation's honestly solid. The plastic's a little bit softer than what I'm used to, which gives you a touch of welcome bendy leeway. And they're great fun to pose, packing a radical range of motion and looking clean doing it, with most of the joints hidden by these convenient bands bandages, like Yogi's collar, with the somewhat awkward exception of the jarringly obvious shoulder joints, all gobbly gubbins and exposed pins, and they can be tricky to stand on the teeny two-toed tips, leading to plenty of photos that look like this. Also, gotta say, I don't love the unsightly but legally necessary shared inner thigh safety tat, cheeky, but look man, Kawabunga is not an exact science, and they totally compensate with charisma. Check out the extreme expressions on these slam fibians each with their own take on the classic beaky turtle scowl, and far less horrifying eyes than I'm used to. Like the eyes on the 80s toys always wig me out. Sculpted deep into the bandana, chalk white and pupil-less. Didn't think I'd end up using the word pupil-less, two reviews on the bounce. But today's ones are just like transfers, almost? Just bold, cartoony eye designs tampographed straight onto the plastic, which part of me's tempted to say it looks like a cop-out or like a manufacturing shortcut, but it honestly feels like an upgrade. It's way more expressive and more conducive to the energy of the movie, and real shit, way less giving me nightmaresy. Okay? Now then, where my boys at? Now this blue bandana badass is legendary leader lad Leonardo, who's probably the closest to what you'd call a normal one. Just a guy with no particular distinguishes, apart from being a friggin humanoid turtle that can do backflips and wear things. Katanas are looking killer there, sharp and smooth and bodaciously curvaceous, sliding smoothly into these double deep pockets for a striking silhouette. Love the belt there with the twin tit splitter shoulder straps, cheeky miniature ninja stars and the initialed buckle with the hardest serif I've ever seen. There is something incredibly pleasing about how the blue complements the green. I've always loved that, it just works well somehow. Like 
it's not a pop, but it's a two. What is the story with the bandanas, actually? Do they mean anything? Is it like their karate rank? Is it a clue to their personality? Temperature? Or is it just solely based on vibes? Anyway, Donatello's definitely set all the sliders to the slinkiest extreme. Just a skinny string bean of a thing, pale and bespectacled and almost obnoxiously crammed with gadgets. Like, I do love that they've gone all in on Donnie's tech nerd tendencies without jamming him up like a friggin' Ghostbuster. I do dig the big nerd glasses and the phone pouch is cute, but I don't think that bum bag comes off and I don't really fancy trying it. And for some reason he's got headphones that don't fit on his head. Do you guys have ears? Is that what those are? Those little nub holes that the frames click into? I hope not. There we go. You can just about click them around his neck. It kinda works. Weapons uncomplicatedly inelegant there. It's a stick, but that's the gag, and he's kinda rocking it. And his sallow, mushy pea skin definitely serves the indoor cat TV tan energy. I love that they made him kinda tech bro, but we still know he wouldn't pay for Twitter. <laughs> Meanwhile, Raphael, I have to do them in theme song order or my head'll explode. Raphael is a lime green mean machine, rocking a full head do rag and hulking over the others with a surlier stature and rage for days. Like, bro's been benching Bebop. More like teen rage mutangry. Injure hurtles. I don't know. Big rafter shock here looks literally lethal with these six psi, which you can sadly only stash in these silly front pockets, which jam him up right to his armpits. Nice pocket life, Eld. I don't quite get his box blurb though. The angry one! Well, everyone else has these clean single word descriptors. The leader, the brains. Couldn't he have just been like the muscle? The bruiser? The rafter party? Give me a break. And Michelangelo is, as we are assured he shall remain, a party dude. A party dude. Which we know because he's the only one that's actually smiling all the way across his weird double wide watermelon head. I think Mikey's my favourite of these guys actually. I love his full bodied forest green with the orange contrast. And he probably feels the best in hand, just Perfect size, perfect weight, definitely the Goldilocks turtle for me. I also think I identify the most with Mikey these days. The guy I am today appreciates a frivolous fool who's just there for the good times. Gotta be Mikey before I turn into Splinter. I don't know if I love the nunchucks though, they are a touch uncomfortable and almost impossible to make look cool. But I do always prefer a solid set action moment chain to like trying to make a real chain work on a toy. It's never good somehow. And check out the shell mounted back pockets for tiny Claspage. The accessory vibe's pretty packed out across the board, actually, with each bro augmenting their iconic weapons with a mutagenous mess of extras. Check this out, they all get a little pre-mutation baby version of themselves, which is ridiculous, and I love it. Get a load of these tortitos, bite-sized and adorable, cast in single colour skin tone and seeming to invite a custom paint job? Maybe just do the shells, pop on a little tiny bandana, who could resist? And what do you reckon to these weapon racks, man? These are such a neat delivery system for tons of extra gear and value, each packing a new alternate primary weapon, some kind of throwing star, ooze canister in various states of disrepair, and a fat slice of Pironi. Again, crying out for a painting. You gotta at least do the silver pizza. Spins me out, man. It looks like lead or mercury. I love pizza and I love metal, but not like this. Paint this thing, please. But yeah, I love that the sprues double as mise en scene for some Mojo Dojo Casa vibe. And like some of the backup weapons on here are low key cooler than the main shit. Check out Raph's cabal ass hook swords. Love Mikey's axle low chain hook thing and Donatello Versace's gnarly naginata there. Like a Lena Greener sung Mina. Look, I learned everything I know from PS1 era beat em ups. I do kind of feel like Leo caught the short straw here with the kunai and the tanto. Oh no, my weakness, small knives. But like he's already got two huge awesome swords. He's fine. And uh, that's kind of it. There's nothing crazy interesting or unusual or prestigious about them. They're just nice little action figures. Simply understated bangers, a nice supermarket find, solid 7.5 out of 10, and the world needs those. And for me, it's deeply gratifying to have a set of the four turtle bros in a matching aesthetic without any dumb gimmicks taking over the show. I mean, the only other turtle figure I currently own is this stupid ass Michelangelo in like medieval slash feudal armor. I don't want that. Ah, nobody wants that. Just having all four turtles in normal mode together is something I've never experienced and honestly something I didn't think I needed, but it hits lovely. And the knowledge that this is as far as it has to go, 
Dude, because this is all I want from the turtle world. A set of four and nothing more. I just needed to dip a toe into the mutagen. I don't want Splinter or April or Ray Filet. I'm good. I have the DVD. They live in there. I don't need a collection. I don't need a turtle shelf. I'll just get these and they can go over there with my three Star Wars guys and my one Toxic Crusader. These little shell raisers have proven such a welcome vacay from my usual transformery churn. A refreshing day trip from Cybertron to the sewers. Like, the day I bought these guys instead of leader class Tiger Hawk, I just felt layers of burnout sluice off my body. Like Piccolo shed in his cape. Cause I live here in this cooped up little world of hyper specificity and I feel like these turtle boys have cut me some slack. Turtle power. <laughs>so lovely to think about something else for a bit. Thank you for watching. Hope you didn't switch this one off after 10 seconds. Thank you for watching. Thank you for not switching off after 10 seconds. Swear down, this is unrelated to the leak of the uh, Transformer crossover turtles toy, which people are talking about. I've been working on this for weeks. It had nothing to do with it, okay? Obviously, I'm probably gonna get it, but this was unrelated. Anyway, thank you to all the patrons who keep the lights on and the motor running. Specifically, this time, the Crimson Claw, with a K, with two Ws. That is grody to the max. Cowabunga, bitches! Be sure to subscribe for more Thew's Awesome Transformers reviews. Limited appeal, keeping it real.